What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to create your perfect table of contents in Adobe InDesign. So as you can see on my screen here, I have InDesign up and running. And if you take a look at my InDesign document, you can see that I have a layout of 19 pages. And what we'll be doing in this video is creating a table of contents for this document specifically. So let's get started. So before we create our table of contents, the first thing that we gotta do is define our paragraph styles. What is that? So real quick, I opened up a Microsoft Word document and if you've ever used Microsoft Word, you may have noticed this box right up here. So I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, Microsoft Word gives us all these text style presets that you can use towards creating your document. So right here would be title. Here's one for the heading another one for the heading and then there's one for the normal text in your document but when we're talking about adobe indesign indesign doesn't have all these presets for us so when we go back to adobe indesign to help us create our table of contents we have to format the text however we want it and then define it as a paragraph style so now let me get out of microsoft word i can quickly do that by using the keyboard shortcut command q or control q q being for quit but with every program, this includes Adobe programs, if you do have work on your document or canvas, you can quickly use the keyboard shortcut command and the letter S to save your work. But in my case, this Microsoft Word document doesn't have anything on it, so I can go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut command Q to exit out this application and go back to Adobe InDesign. But now being back in Adobe InDesign, what I'm gonna do is define each and every paragraph style that I see in my document. So for example, this number one here, it's a specific size and it's a specific font. So what I'm gonna do is highlight this number one here. And then I'm gonna go to my side panel where it says paragraph styles. I'm gonna click on that. And then this window comes up. So all the way at the bottom of that window is gonna be a plus sign right here that prompts me to create a new style so I'm gonna click on that and then paragraph style one would appear so I'm gonna double click on that and I can give it a name so I'm gonna give it the name chapter number like so and you can see that we now have a paragraph style for the chapter number in this case the number one here so I'm gonna do the same thing with the chapter name that's right below it so I'm gonna highlight that word right there and then I'm gonna click on this plus sign to create a new style and then paragraph style one would come up so I'm gonna double click on that and name it chapter name and now we have a paragraph style for the chapter name so now let me transition to the actual page in my document and define the paragraph styles of those so in this case right here this text box I can make that the header so I'm going to highlight that, click on create new style, and then type in header, you know, give it a name, like so. And then we also need a paragraph style for the normal text. So I'm just going to highlight just any piece of text here, right? Click on create new style, give it a name. I'm going to name it text, like so. And now we have all our paragraph styles defined for our document. So with that being said, we can now go up to my first page, or if you don't have a first page like I do in my document, you can just simply create a new blank page and go from there. Because what we'll be doing now is figuring out what we want our table of contents to look like. So let's first start off with the title of our table of contents, which would oftentimes be table of contents or just contents. So what I'm going to do is create a text box. I can go to my type tool right here and create just a random text box right here. All right. And I'm going to title it table of contents, right? And now after typing in your title of your table of contents, you can now format it to have whatever typeface you want, whatever variation of that typeface you can give it any side you can just adjust the letting adjust the kerning adjust the tracking all that stuff you can do that right now so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna give it this font it's my favorite font y'all know how much I love this font and I'm gonna give it a specific size I'm gonna make it 36 and now I'm gonna align it to the center like so all right 
So now having the title table of contents in my table of contents, I'm now gonna figure out what I want the actual table of contents to look like. So I'm gonna create another text box like so, going back to my type tool over here, and just create a new text box like so. Just a random text box, it doesn't have to be a specific size or anything, just make a text box so you can plan out what you want your table of contents to look like. So in this text box that I just created, I'm gonna type in chapter head, and then I'm also gonna type in subhead, all right? Subhead being like a subcategory for the chapter head. So when the table of contents generates, this subhead here will be indented like so. But bottom line is what we're gonna do with chapter head and subhead is we're gonna give it a specific typeface, a specific size, a specific tracking, letting, and kerning, and specific alignment. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna highlight chapter head, I'm gonna give it a specific font. I'm gonna use this font right here. Use this variation. And I'm gonna make it 20, size 20, okay? And now for subhead, I'm gonna make it size 16. I'm gonna actually use the same fonts, just a different variation, like so. All right, so now after formatting the chapter head and the subhead to be whatever format that we want, we're now gonna define each of these styles as a paragraph style. So let's first start off with the title of table of contents. So I'm gonna highlight table of contents, create new style at the bottom. And since this paragraph style specifically is gonna be in our table of contents, I'm gonna give it the acronym table of contents, TOC, and I'm gonna call it title, so TOC title. That's gonna help us later on. So, TOC title. And now let's do the same thing for chapter head. So I'm gonna highlight that. Click on create new style. Give that a name. So TOC, cause that's gonna be in our table of contents. And chapter head. All right, and now let's do the same thing for subhead. Create new style, TOC subhead, or heading to whichever comes first. All right, so now we have our textiles defined for our actual document, and the textiles defined for what we want our table of contents to look like. So now I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I'm gonna get rid of all these text boxes that are in this blank page. So I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so now we can go on to create our table of contents. So we're gonna go up here to layout and click on table of contents. All right, and then this window comes up. So first things first, up here in the top of this window, it's asking us what we want our table of contents title to be and what style do we want it to be. So the title of our table of contents, we want it to be table of contents, right? So that's what we can put in this box, or if you want it to be a different title, you can put that into this box right here. But in my case, I wanna make it table of contents, like so. And then it's asking us what paragraph style do we want the title table of contents to be. We can specify that in this Dropbox that's next to it called style. We're gonna click on this Dropbox here, and we're gonna look for TOC title which we have defined right here. So we're gonna click on that. That way when our table of contents generates, the title table of contents specifically will be that specific paragraph style. But now let's transition lower so we can tell InDesign what specifically do we want in our table of contents. So we obviously want the chapter name and we also want the subcategories or subheads of those chapter names in our table of contents. So let's go over here to other styles, this little window right here and I'm gonna click on chapter name because we obviously want the chapter name in our table of contents. So after clicking on that, it'll highlight like this and we're gonna click on add like so. And now that chapter name is in this window right here, when our table of contents generates, every piece of text with that same paragraph style will generate in our table of contents. So let's go on and add our subhead, 
we gave it the name header so we can click on that and then click on add to put it in our table of contents. And just like I demonstrated earlier, header will be a little bit of a subhead. So it'll be indented and it'll act like a little subcategory when our table of contents generates, which as you can see here, it's indented already. So now after adding those to our table of contents, InDesign now knows that we want to include both the chapter name and the header, those paragraph styles in our table of contents. But if we go back to the page that we were on when we defined chapter name and header, we obviously don't want that big, huge, large white text in our table of contents. So while we're in this window, we can define its entry style. What do we want that specific piece of text to look like in our table of contents? Like I said, we don't want that big, huge, large white text in our table of contents. So I'm gonna click on chapter name and then go down here to where it says entry style. So just like what we defined earlier, we defined chapter head in our table of contents, which is what we did on this blank page here. So under entry style for chapter name, I'm gonna click on TOC chapter head. So every piece of text that has the chapter name paragraph style in our table of contents, it'll have this paragraph style, TOC chapter head, right? So now let's do the same thing with our header. So I'm gonna click on header Make sure that's highlighted and then go to entry style and look for TOC subhead. So I'm going to click on that and that way everything with this specific paragraph style, it'll generate as this specific paragraph style in our table of contents. So now after doing all of that, I can hit OK on this window and now InDesign will make my cursor look like this. This is ended on asking us, where do we want our table of contents to be dropped off at? Fortunately for me, I have this blank page in my document. So I'm just gonna click anywhere on this blank page. And you can now see that my table of contents has been generated. But as you can see, the table of contents didn't generate every single chapter name and subhead that's in my document. But that's because each and every text style may have not been defined correctly. So if we go back to the first page that we were working on earlier, you can see that we defined the paragraph style of this piece of text specifically, this piece of text specifically, this one, and our normal text. So what we gotta do is go throughout our document and make sure each and every paragraph style that's equivalent to these are also defined in our document. So what I'm gonna do is click on this chapter name here and then over here in my paragraph styles window, I can quickly click on chapter name, like so. You won't physically see it change, but now you know that that paragraph style specifically has been defined correctly. So that way later on, when we update our table of contents, this chapter name specifically will pop up. So let me do the same thing with this paragraph style over here that has header. like so and now that has been defined correctly so we could do the same thing with the text but since the text specifically is not going to be in our table of contents we don't have to but it's also an option so that's what I'm gonna do define the text make sure it's been defined correctly all right so now let me do that to each and every piece of text in our document and then when we come back I can update the table of contents to be exactly how we want it. And I'm gonna speed through that so I don't make the video super long. So let's go. Okay, so now I have each and every piece of text in my document defined properly. So now I'm back in my table of contents. Now I'm gonna update it. So I'm gonna click on my text box with the table of contents on it. I'm gonna go back up here to layout and click on update table of contents. And now you can see that my table of contents now has every chapter head and subhead that's in my document, which is exactly what I want. But typically when you're looking at a table of contents, it would have two or three columns, right? But how do you make columns in Adobe InDesign? So I did make a video on that. Link will be up here in the card and there will be a description to that video to make margins and columns in your InDesign document. But I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So I'm gonna go back up here to layout, click on margins and columns, and I'm gonna set my column amount to two and then click OK. 
and now my table of contents has two columns now. So I can quickly adjust this text box to meet the width of that column specifically. But you can now see that the rest of the text in my table of contents, it needs to be shown, but visually it's not there. So what I can do is click on this little red button that's at the bottom right of my text box here. And that's InDesign telling us that there's more text that needs to be shown within this text box. So what I can do is click on that red button. And you can see that InDesign made my cursor look like this again. And that's InDesign prompting us to drop this continuous text box anywhere else in our page or spread. Which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to move my cursor all the way to the top and drop a text box right here. My continuous text box. And now you can see that this text box that I just created is now a continuation of this text box here. But typically when you're looking at a table of contents, you would notice that there would be an alignment of the page numbers on the right hand side of your table of contents like so. But in my table of contents specifically, you can see that the page numbers are right up on the chapter head and page head like so. But how do you align the page numbers to the right hand side or the left hand side of your text box? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight just one piece of text here, right? And then over here in my justification and alignment settings, right over here in my workspace, I'm going to click on this button specifically. And you can now see that that's number four. It's now aligned to the right hand side of my text box. But if we look over here to where my paragraph style window is, you can see that that specific paragraph style has a plus sign next to it. That means some way, somehow that paragraph style has changed. It may have changed justification, changed the kerning, changed the line spacing, changed the font, changed the font size. Anything could happen, but that's InDesign telling us that there may have been a change to that paragraph style. So what I can do is redefine this paragraph style. And when I say redefine, it's a lot easier than creating a new paragraph style and then deleting the old one. It's a lot easier this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that paragraph style specifically in my paragraph styles window and click on redefine. All right. And after I click on redefine, watch how the other text that has that same paragraph style, watch all that change real quick. So I'm going to click on redefine. And you can now see that the page numbers of all the text that's that same paragraph style is now aligned to the right hand side of each text box like so. So now let me do the same thing for the TLC chapter heads. So I'm going to highlight just any piece of text with that uh, paragraph style. I'm going to click on that same button to align the page number to the right hand side of my text box by clicking this button. And now you can see that in my paragraph styles window that that also has a plus sign next to it. That means something about the letting, the kerning, the justification, the font, the size, the whatever. Something changed about that style. So I'm going to right click on that and click on redefine. And now you can see that each and every piece of text with that same paragraph style, it quickly adjusted to the change that we just redefined. But with your table of contents, InDesign makes your table of contents be all in one text box. So the title, the TOC chapter head, and the TOC subhead will all be on one continuous text box. But I wanna make it appear as though the title table of contents is on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size of this text box so that way it fits only the title table of contents. So that's what I'm going to do like so. All right, we can move this out the way real quick. Stretch it to the other side. And adjust that. All right, and now the title table of contents is on its own, but not exactly because our actual table of contents is in this continuous text box that we made earlier. So what I'm gonna do is align that with this column here, adjust the size of it, all right? And then in this text box, you can now see that that red button that we used earlier, it's back because there's more text that needs to be shown within this entire table of contents. So I'm gonna click on that. And now my cursor looks like this again. So now we can 
click anywhere in our page or spread to drop this continuous text box like so and then from here you can still make modifications to the paragraph styles that are in your table of contents just remember to redefine each and every paragraph style properly so i'm going to actually do that now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the size of some of these pieces of text here i'm just going to highlight some of it like so make it like a little smaller size and then over here my paragraph style that plus sign is back so i'm going to right click and click on redefine and now you can see all my text fits in both text boxes now. But even after making that change, I still feel like I need to adjust the line spacing or the letting. So what I'm gonna do is highlight some text and simply adjust the line spacing like so. All right, and then that plus sign is back so I can right click and click on redefine. All right, and that's looking pretty good. So now let me actually do that with the TLC chapter head. Just adjust the line spacing like so. That plus sign is in my paragraph styles window, so right click and redefine. All right. And with that, you can still adjust the letting of it until each and every piece of text reaches the very bottom of this text box if you want. Or if you want to leave it like this and then add some sort of a picture to it, that's up to you. But bottom line is we have our table of contents but after having all the text in there, you can now feel free to decorate it or add any patterns or whatever, any pictures, any PNGs, anything like that into your table of contents and decorate it however you want. But bottom line is, that's how you create your perfect table of contents in Adobe InDesign. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. Let a nigga like Pat Kate